On July 8th, 2020, I took a flight from Montreal, Canada to Frankfurt, Germany to be one of the very first tourists allowed in Europe. The borders had just opened to non-EU citizens and I jumped at the chance to travel again and I explained why in the last video. Obviously flying during a pandemic, there are a few differences. So in this video, I'll be explaining them along the way in a list. Flying from Montreal to Frankfurt and all the different things I experienced along the way. This story starts at 5.30 the morning before my flight. Honestly, it was weird to be flying again. I had been staying with my family in Canada during the pandemic and was getting dropped off by my mom. She's pretty cool. And here's the first difference. No matter how cool your mom is, she's not allowed in the airport. If you're not flying, you can't enter. The next difference I had heard before I arrived, and it's that masks must be worn by law in the airport and on airplanes. Easy. I have one already. I headed to security and was complimented by a nice lady on my tattoo. Thank you. I'm gonna miss Canada. For the flight, prices were about the same, but since there's such fewer connections, a one-way ticket to Frankfurt had a 10-hour layover in the middle, where I'd be stuck in Montreal. The gate was basically empty, and hey, did you know you can legally bring live lobsters on airplanes? That's an Atlantic Canada thing. Is that worse than snakes? It probably is. Anyway, on the plane, they give you these clean care packages, which include one water, one set of gloves, another mask. I mean, you're not allowed to enter the airport without a mask, so this would be an extra. Two wipes and one hand sanitizer. The plane was basically empty, and my assigned seat was one that was elbow to elbow with one of the only other passengers on the plane. It's stupid, all these seats. I know, right? All the seats, and we're, sitting, we're sat beside each other. Yeah. After a bit of confusion, I found another seat, and then this came on the intercom. Yeah, I think I'll break the rules, thanks. Welcome to Montreal Dorval Airport. This was the domestic terminal, and mostly everything was closed. As you can see, any kind of shop that would sell sunglasses or clothing is closed. Though there is still some food locations open. It seems more like fast food. Um, this is the domestic arrivals or the transfer area. So in Canada, you can travel domestically somewhat. Um, so you can tell this is obviously a little bit busy. But when I cross over into international, I don't expect to see anybody there. Okay, look at this. These are all of the international flights for today here at this airport. It's one of the biggest in Canada. One, two, three, four, five, maybe 10. Half of them are going to Paris. That's it for a large airport like this in Canada. That's crazy. The seating at the gates had these little signs indicating not to sit too close together, which is great actually, because no one likes that anyway. I found a little nook behind a closed Starbucks to hang out by myself and wait until my flight. Welcome to my nook. There's nobody here but us. And the plane we're taking very shortly to Frankfurt. You probably can't see it now, it's all blown out. But this thing, wow. Uh, coming from where I was in Canada, like I said, there's only been a few reported cases. Masks are recommended, but not that big of a deal. Here, of course, world travel, and especially Montreal, one of the biggest cities in Canada, very strongly recommended. But it, there's some difficulties with this. I am not used to having conversations, especially with people with maybe a more thick accent where I can't see their mouth speak. It's really, it's really hard to understand. As well as I have to have this on all through the, air, the airport and the airplane. So for the next basically from the, like 24 hours with this mask on. And I can't get over the people who wear these masks. I, I saw already one guy wear it as an eye mask as he was sleeping. And another guy who had his nose out like this. <laughs> other people who are grabbing it from the front. <laughs> anyway, it's funny. Let me show you basically how it works, how you're supposed to use the mask. Always with the sides, otherwise you're defeating the whole purpose. Gotta use ear straps, they're really important. Gotta keep your fingers away from your face. The game, the game we're playing, this entire trip, keep the fingers away from the face. See right now, these fingers are too close to my face. Fingers away <laughs> from the face. Okay, flight time. So we're looking for gate 52, and as we look around in the back of the terminal, there's actually a fair amount of people. And yeah, looking over at the gate, the flight's more full than I thought it was gonna be. Before boarding, I had my temperature checked. This was the only time it happened during the entire trip. Then got on a mostly empty plane. 
I was reminded about all of the extra precautions the airline was doing in order to protect us from COVID-19. We're also taking extra precautions to ensure a healthy flying environment, such as using hospital-grade air filters and disinfectants on board. Anne was handed a pre-packaged meal. Like if airplane food could get any worse. It definitely can. There was also no drink service on the plane. During this flight, it seemed everyone had their own seat group, unit, whatever this is called. Which means we could all lay down and sleep. But they didn't pass out the usual pillows and blankets you'd expect on a red-eye flight. I didn't care. I passed out and woke up in Frankfurt. Guten Tag. Thank, Thank you. you. We're here. <laughs> when I approached the immigration officer, I was ready to answer all sorts of questions. I only got one. It was this. Staying in Frankfurt. Then, I grabbed my bag. Only five bags came off that belt. No one stayed in Frankfurt. Walked out into the arrivals area, and then walked out of the airport. It was that easy. All in all, it was easy. Honestly, maybe even better than normal. There was no lines, really no inconveniences. I had my temperature checked once before leaving to come to Europe but it was a pretty smooth experience. I wasn't even expected to quarantine or self-isolate for two weeks, even though I am choosing to now. And if you think about it, if you do choose to open to tourism, you can't have a mandatory two-week quarantine because there goes vacation. While I definitely can't recommend anybody travel during the pandemic, I can say my experience was quite a breeze. And this next video I'm going to make, this is a three-part series, I'm going to explain everything I did in preparation to fly and to travel again, as well as the resources I used to be able to understand if I could even go to Europe to begin with. Obviously for myself, I wanna make sure I stay safe. But what's even a bigger concern for me is making sure other people stay safe too. And I'll be talking about all of that in the next video. And if you're at the edge of your seat saying, how the hell can you travel during a pandemic? I covered that in the last video, but I wanna talk about it. Is it too early to travel? Is it okay to travel? I don't know really the answer, even though the countries are opening up for tourism. So let's talk about it in the comments. So thank you so much for watching the second episode in the three-part series. The third one's coming up very soon, and I can't wait to share it with you. I am so excited to travel again, and I'm also excited to have you along for the ride. Let's see if we can dismantle what traveling during the pandemic's like, and hopefully I can share a few tips and tricks along the way. Thank you, dragons, for watching, and chase your fears. Peace. Thank you.